welcome, welcome. I hope that you are getting situated, getting comfy, getting your water and your notebook for notes. My name is Jenny Enchondo and I am here each and every week to help to facilitate these sessions. Think of me as your party host. So if you have any questions as we are going along, please do let me know. I'm going to tell you about our speaker and then I'll be right along with you listening and enjoying and learning. And then on the back end of her presentation, we'll get a great time for Q and A. So don't be shy about asking questions or, you know, being inquisitive and joining in or proposing a situation that perhaps you're dealing with in your own experience, or uh, perhaps if you're not in a business yet or don't, don't have any kind of marketing going, but you want to, don't be afraid to ask questions during this session. So I am really excited to tell you about our speaker today. She is Estefiana Garcia Leja. She is a talented designer with more than six years of experience creating intentional brand strategies and graphics. So uh, to me, this is such an interesting and unique world because if you don't do this, you're like, I have no clue how you would go about it. She works for startups, small businesses, and international marketing agencies. She is the owner and lead designer at Estefiana Designs, where her team focuses on elevating brands and empowering Latina-owned businesses with smart, strategic design. Uh, in, in terms of what she does outside of simply designing, she loves hosting networking events for local entrepreneurs. She does those, by the way, in English and in Spanish. She is passionate about educating, empowering, and providing extra support to business owners who are in need. She is also an accomplished public speaker. Uh, she has been at training sessions. She is also a proud member of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, where she leads a women's group there. So her, her work speaks for itself and she continues to grow and to thrive and to reach out. So I hope that you will immerse yourself in her session today. The topic, by the way, is Branding 101 important importance in the digital marketing world. I know that you all know how important this is, but sometimes you wonder, well, how do I, how do I get there? How do I do it? That's what she's here for. And I will also say this is part one in a two part series. So we will get to be with her for two weeks and get to learn from her. All right, Stefiana, I already love that first graphic that you have here. I'm going to mute myself and you can take it away from here. Hi. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Welcome everybody again. Uh, my name is Estefania and it's an honor to be here presenting for you guys today. Uh, like I was mentioning to Jenny earlier, most of this year has been 101 events thanks to COVID being, you know, down the histor historic line. <laughs> so I'm very excited to host a virtual meeting today or a virtual workshop. So the topic today is branding 101 and the importance in the digital marketing world that we live in today. Um, and thank you, Jenny, for that amazing introduction. It feels a little bit weird and amazing at the same time to hear her introduce me like that because it's been um, four transformative years for myself and my business that we I launched it as a college student and now it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, so let's get started because I know you guys came here to learn. So first of all, what is branding? Branding is the process that allows us to develop and manage our brand. So it makes our clients or our potential consumers or leads in the market recognize us before other competitors that may be selling the same product or having the same service. Um, like you see here, I'm actually working on a branding project and you see me laying out colors, fonts, all types of the important elements that make up your brand. This is why uh, when a brand designer is working on a branding project for a client, we have to do our research and identify what your competitors are already doing, um, what the market is already offering, what it looks like and what it's missing so that we can identify the gaps and make sure that your market and your business is positioned the way that it needs to be as the expert and as the unique value that your product or service holds. Um, moving on is just... Uh, quick phrase that I like to always show during my presentations for those that are new to branding. So marketing and branding are often used a lot of times and people confuse them. People, you know, they don't know the, the difference or whether you should be focusing on marketing or whether you should be focusing on branding. The truth is that if you do a marketing campaign or if you invest thousands of dollars on your marketing, but you don't have the right branding, your marketing is not going to work. 
meaning your marketing efforts are pretty much just going to go to waste because if you're not branding yourself, your company, your employees, your product or service that you're offering, then people are not going to recognize you as a unique company or as an expert in your field. So it's important to understand that marketing communicates what your company does, but branding, on the other hand, defines what it is and for what purpose it does so. So meaning when you're working in your branding, you're making sure your values, your message, and your target audience are going to be aligned and connected through your visual branding. And then you can focus on your marketing efforts, which for the marketing, I mean, like whether it's organic or paid ads, um, any promotional printed items, the way you brand your uniforms, your T-shirts, all of that kind of stuff comes after. First, you focus on your branding part uh, aspect of it. So how does branding benefit us as a business? This is one of my favorite slides because I get to visually or help you imagine it, um, give you examples of how we see branding every single day in our lives. And sometimes we don't notice that that's branding. So of course, the first one, most of you guys are familiar, the Starbucks coffee versus the regular, you know, I don't know, gas station or McDonald's or your house coffee. Why do we go every day and spend more than $5 on a coffee that we could make at home? So a lot of you may say, well, one, I don't know how to make all of those flavors that they offer. <laughs> and two, I may be lazy. But three, the truth is that Starbucks sells us on this experience, right? You're going to come into this um, beautiful coffee shop where they're going to treat you and welcome you, greet you with a smile, and you're going to get to pick from a lot of um, amazing flavors. And oftentimes the seasonal ones, we all know that right now they have like their pumpkin spice or their apple, whatever. Um, and that brings us excitement because how many of you saw any stories on social media or any posts where people are like, oh, I can't wait for pumpkin everything. So then they go everywhere looking for that seasonal um, item or product that they're offering, right? Chick-fil-A does the same thing with their peach milkshake that just ended in the summer. That is their one item to excite people to come back every summer. Oh, is it going to be peach or is it going to be a new flavor every year? Um, now, I once heard say one of my previous um, boss when I used to work for corporate, they, I found it interesting because they said, if I could ever just have my own business or own a franchise, I would own a Starbucks and a Chick-fil-A. And I was like, hmm, why? And he's like, because I would not need to focus a lot on marketing because the simple fact that I have that logo there, I know there's going to be cars around my building at all times, every day. And I, I sat down and I was just getting started in my business and the whole branding aspect. And I was like, that is so true because... Why? Because Starbucks and let's say Chick-fil-A, for example, they have taken the time at the beginning to build their brand and really make a name for themselves, right? To make sure that they always stand out amongst their competitors for their service, their experience, their products, and obviously the quality of not only their their food or their service, but also you ex when you go in there, you expect a clean place. And it's actually rare that I've seen a Chick-fil-A or a Starbucks that is not clean, right? A lot of the times, if you walk in there, the mess is gone. They're already cleaning the tables or it's already clean for you. It's really rare to find like a dirty Starbucks or something. Why? Because that's in their promise to their clients or to their audience that they can expect that every single time that they visit one of their locations. And for those of you that didn't know, and I recently learned this too, apparently Chick-fil-A is very picky with who they welcome to or who they allow to own a franchise. What does that mean? That they want someone that owns their franchise to be capable of holding that promise for them because one person can ruin it for the entire company, right? Because even though they're franchises, if one franchise somewhere in the world uh, ruins that reputation for them, then it's pretty much game over and they're going to have to re-strategize and possibly apologize and you know how all that goes on social media. Um, so that's why it's 
crucial to always make sure that when you're working on your branding, it's going to allow you to stand out from your competitors. It's going to offer you the confidence that it's going to form a long-term relationship with your customers. So like we talked about this, these companies, how long have they been in business and how long will they still be in business if we continue to value quality and um, customer service and the experience over the price, right? Um, a lot of times, even though we may be on a budget, we still go there because we need the Starbucks coffee to wake up to start our day. Sometimes it just we're having a horrible day and it's just going to make our day better just by buying us that little cup of pleasure for us. <laughs> um, so let's move on to the water bottle. The water bottle is a little similar to the Starbucks coffee example. So we see here on the right, a regular, on the left, sorry, we see a regular water bottle, right? This is a water bottle you can get at Walmart, you can get anywhere, right? On the gas station, whatever. Why do we rather spend more on, let's say, for example, Voss water that, than a regular water bottle? You see here that Voss World on Instagram has 478,000 followers. So what's the difference between a regular water bottle and this bottle on Instagram that is just a Instagram superstar, right? Um, why? Because you'll see on their bio, it's very minimal. There is no like amazing promises on their bio or anything to attract these followers. But why are they following? If you can see, and I wish I was able to fit, you know, up their entire feed on here. But if you see the first three posts, I found it very interesting that the first post is showing us how else we can use our water bottles. Um, because you may think, well, it's just water, right? But if you see on that first post, it's full of fruit, right? And it looks, it was, I'm assuming it was for their summer campaign because it looks very refreshing, very hydrating. So they're selling us on that idea that you don't, you can't only just have your plain water, but you can play around with it, right? So they play with our imagination. You can use fruits, you can use whatever you want to give it extra flavor, your own flavor, meet your nutritional needs, hydrate you for the summer. And on top of that, the bottle is going to look elegant and fancy when you're walking around with it because one, you look like a healthy person and two, um, it's just a beautiful aesthetic, right? To have those beautiful fruits on there. So that's what they're doing with that. The second post was actually a video. Um, but again, this was selling you on kind of like Coke do does, Coca-Cola on the, when you go to the movies and they start pouring that delicious Coke on top of the ice and your mouth gets watery because you all of a sudden got thirsty by just watching that. That's what they're doing here. They're showing you, uh, introducing you, I believe it's to their sparkling um, aspect or their, their sparkling water that they came up with. Um, and so that also shows you, you can do it, maybe mix it up with your alcoholic drinks and make a beautiful and delicious drink, right? Um, and so Voss really shows us the endless opportunities or um, options that you can use their brand and that you can make it your own. Whereas a water bottle, you really have to get creative because there is not an Instagram account for a regular water bottle to show you how you can use it or how, can it, how it can be cool. Um, so this is just the difference how branding your business can really make you stand out from your competitors. There are other, obviously, water bottle brands, um, coffee brands. There are a lot of local coffee shops in Dallas just um, in general. And so they each have to somewhat compete with each other by showing what makes them unique through their branding. And inside of the branding comes their photography style, their voice who they target, of course, because not everyone may target the same person. Um, there might be organic coffee shops and there might be regular coffee shops. So it really depends who they're talking to. And that's going to play a big role on content, which I'm not going to get a lot into detail today because we'll actually be having a separate workshop for that. Um, but let's move on. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down for Jenny to make sure I answer later. Uh, so why is branding important? Again, it's a memorable impression on consumers because if I hear, let's move on from, you know, the water bottles and let's go back to the coffee. I'm a big coffee shop person, so I am always, even though I have my home office, if I can go work at a beautiful coffee shop and have an excuse to buy a coffee, I will go there. So I'm always asking people, 
oh, what other coffee shop should I try? Um, you know, I love the Bishop Arts area and other little coffee shops. So if they ever tell me, oh, there's a new one here and there, what is the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to get on my phone and look them up and see what they have, right? Because I want to see pictures of their menu, pictures of their coffee, see if there's something that catches my attention, see how far they are from me. So that's the first thing we do. If they're not on Instagram, we go on Google. But that whole visual digital aspect is the first impression that your consumers get, right? Or if I'm already one of your loyal clients and I want to invite Jenny, then I would have to show her or share the profile like, hey, Jenny, let's go to this coffee shop. And she's going to do the same thing. She's going to go and check it out to see if it's convenient for us or if she has a better option. Second, it lets your cus customers know what to expect from your company. So if I see that on their social media or on their website, they have, you know, people working uh, very professional people, um, and this doesn't have to be coffee shop, this is like any other business. Um, if I see friendly people answering the phone with a smile on their face, um, the colors that they're using, the whole aesthetic and vibe of their branding, that's going to let me know what to expect from that business. Um, if I'm looking for someone more welcoming and friendly, then that's what I'm going to be looking for through their branding. If I'm looking for someone that's more serious and down to business, you know, then I'll look for that part. Um, and then, of course, if I'm looking for someone that's more like on a personal brand level, that's not a full on company, then that's also easy to spot on through their website, through their social media, through um, their business cards even. So this sets the expectation for your company, your branding. So how many times, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have worked with clients that come to me because they want to offer a more luxurious experience because they want to raise their rates but they don't think their branding is aligned with that goal and so what happens they're not getting that type of clients right your clientele will be attractive to what you show them so if you're showing them a cheaply made logo that you probably bought from somewhere where other people have access to it like a lot of thousands of people can download the same logo and just put their name on there um, if you're offering poor quality uh, photos like photography, it's very blurry, it's, it's very low res, all of that stuff plays a big role because that is attracting the clientele that you want to attract. But in this case, if that's not your clientele, then that's a red flag for you to identify that it's time to upgrade your branding and make sure that it's aligned with your goals. So a lot of times when my clients come to me, like I mentioned, they want to raise the rates. They want to, maybe they move their location to a more, um, you know, maybe like a more wealthy area and they want to attract that clientele, but how do they do it? Then we sit down and have a consultation where we talk about, okay, what are your current colors? Is this, what is this transmitting to them? You know, is this transmitting a high-end brand or is this transmitting, I don't know, like in the middle or are you like in the starting stages? And it also has to do with how far you are in your business and also your employees and the service, the customer service that they're providing for them, right? Um, I have clients that maybe have nail salons and they have a whole experience when you walk in there, you're greeted, you get, I don't know, a little bottle or cup, um, cup of champagne, glass of champagne. Um, and while you're waiting, choosing your colors, you're already feeling like, man, <laughs> you're feeling like, wow, I'm already feeling pampered and I haven't even sat down to get my nails done yet, right? So this is all the experience that you want people to see and feel from you from the minute they walk in that door. For businesses like me that were virtual, uh, we might not have an office or location for people to come in. That experience is still there from the first call or the first message that they send. That is already playing a big role in the experience and that relationship that you're either going to build or you're going to lose based on how you treat it. Right. Um, same with how long we take to reply. How do we reply? Do we just go on and on or do we start ask, um, providing tips or solutions from the very first time they inquire? This is what will blow customers and potential leads minds because not everyone takes the time to do that. And this is notice this is not necessarily through your visual branding, but it's part of branding because it's how you're building that impression for them. Um, it's allowing you to distinguish yourself from your competition because there are companies that, let's say they hire a third party to handle their social media. 
And if they don't have like uh, brand guidelines where it says, this is our tone of voice, this is how we talk to our customers, this is how we greet them. And then let's say that this third party doesn't know and they're just busy answering DMs for you or, or emails for you. And someone doesn't doesn't sound like you wanted that tone of voice for your brand to sound, then you just lost that person. And then they might be, uh, you know, a lot of, nowadays marketing is a lot of work to what is the word of mouth um, or like recommendations. So if that person goes and tells someone else, you know what, their Instagram looked really good, but I don't feel like when I interacted with them, I don't feel like it was aligned with what they were portraying on their feed. Um, then they might start that other reputation of you or your business that you have no idea about because of that small thing that was missing, following your brand guidelines. And we'll, we'll touch base on what a brand guidelines is a little bit more. But this is part of your branding that is not necessarily visual, but it's more verbal or, you know, through the interaction with your customers. Um, it also clarifies what what it is that you're offering and what makes you the best option, right? So even for me as a brand designer, what makes me the best option for your business? What helps us is that a lot of times we already have like our niche or our, our targeted clients. So if I get clients that I feel are not aligned with my design style, which I'm very like clean, minimal, modern, um, more like on the elegant vibes. If I get a client that wants something more bold, more uh, heavy on maybe illustrations or maybe someone that wants like really dark colors and a, a different vibe that I feel would not be aligned with me or that I feel that I know someone else that can, then I'll be more than happy to recommend them to someone that I know is going to give them that full experience and that is going to satisfy them with the end result that they're looking for, right? Um, so as a business, you have to know what makes you unique. So in this case, what did I say? I know my design style, right? So that's what sets me apart from others as well as my customer experience because um, we each have a different approach to things. So in your case, whether your business is in real estate, whether your business is um, in the beauty industry, you have to know what is your unique point of selling so that when you work with a brand designer or you're working on your branding on your own, you know how to include that in there so that your customers or your potential clients, when they land on that page, when they get that business card from you or from someone that had your business card, they're able to see that, oh, it says, I don't know, 20 plus year of experience, or they went to, they work with a certain, I don't know, person that they might know, or um, they offer this service that other spas, I haven't seen that they offer that, right? So stuff like that is what will set you apart aside from your visual branding. But if you've been paying attention to this point, they all come together to form that full branding for your business and for yourself if you're a personal brand it's the same way for instance for me i have my logo right i have my colors i have everything but i myself physically i'm also branded because it's also a personal brand with a business people know my face so sometimes i don't need my business card when i go to events i'll get people that come to me or they'll just yell across the room like hi i know you because i saw you on instagram i remember your face whatever and i'm just like wow sometimes your face really is your business card you know so that comes along with branding like we mentioned um, let's say they walk into your business and if your employees look so sad or so bored, that is playing along with your branding as well, because again, it's setting that expectation. And if your business is known for being so, um, what's the word, like so happy, so welcoming, so friendly, then you'll want everyone to be like that, even how they answer the phone, right? Everything is part of your branding. So let's move on to five main attributes that will make a quality brand um, just like we talked about that will make a more high-end brand so that it allows you to raise your rates it allows you to stand for that vision that you have so first of all the name right the name of your entire business or company this is again the first impression of a company it's recommended to be related to the essence of your business. Um, a lot of times we want it to be tied to what we do. So for instance, my business does have the word designs in there, but 
a lot of people, I feel like they get stuck just starting their business because they can't come up with the right name, right? Um, they want it to be super creative, but at the same time, they get stuck. A lot of times you just have to make sure that it's related to the essence of your business. Like what is that, what is that factor that's going to set you apart? It has to be brief and easy to remember. Um, you can always add a slogan, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but you can always add a slogan to add more of like a little sentence or phrase of what you're going to offer but your name should be brief short and creative so that people can remember right like a lot of brands we know now are very uh minimal or simple in their name that is why because once you have your name that's going to play a big role on your logo and the rest of your visual elements so let's move on to your values values is pretty much the corporate image of a company is not only your logo how we talked about or your font or your colors it's also the values of your company. So what are your values that you're gonna pass on to employees if that's your goal to form a team, right? Um, they have to be what the organization is based on, kind of like pillars, think of them as, as pillars. Um, those are your values that are gonna hold on your business and are gonna allow you to, every time that you move forward or every time that you rebrand, it's going to allow you to better serve your clientele, but also train your team and be able to grow it with people that are aligned to that, right? So for instance, in my company, um, one of the values will be, let's say, integrity, let's say, um, welcoming, friendly, right? I want my, my clients to feel welcome, to feel like they're in good hands, um, to feel that if anything comes up, we'll be able to be with them along the way to find a solution. Um, so if I, if I'm interviewing, those are things that I would communicate to my, to the people that are interviewing and make sure that I can feel that they're aligned with that, right? Because at the end of the day, they're representing you and your business as well. Um, so moving on to your logo, your, lo your logo should be understandable by the public, but also attractive to your potential customers. Obviously not everyone, not every business owner is a logo designer and that's why we exist <laughs> to be able to sit down with you guys and talk about your vision. One question I always ask my clients is, okay, what is your five year goal from now? Because you don't want a logo that's going to look pretty and work this year or this month. You want your logo should be functional for at least the next five years, right? Because businesses grow, goals change, target audience changes sometimes depending on your product or service. So you want your logo to be able to be aligned and work for you at least for the next five years. And this is usually a question that catches my clients off guard and they're like, oh, yeah, let me let me sit down and think about that one real quick. And that's okay. That's why I like asking this question because if you're able to sit down and think about these questions, it's really going to help us logo designers get a little bit inside your head and see where your vision is, where your goals are, right? We're not just going to ask you, what are your favorite colors? Do you like this fonts? Because yes, you want your logo to also be aligned with you but it's not really about you it's about your clients and who you want to work with so it should be able to be attractive to them and to um, bring them to your business uh, you need to consider both your customers and your competition because um, if you're just keeping in mind your customers but you're not doing your research on your competitors what are they doing are their colors working for them maybe you just want the same colors as let's say Wingstop because you're going to sell wings, but is that color working for them? Is that color making people that are driving uh, by the business hungry and like crave wings, right? Uh, we always hear about um, the colors yellow and red for food, like restaurants in the restaurant industry, right? McDonald's has yellow and red. Why? Because it's, almost, it's supposed to make us hungry and like uh, be attracted to it when we see it uh, down the highway or whatever. So there's a lot of color theory and 
behind it as long uh, as well as a typography like fonts right fonts also play a big role and this is where we come in to advise you based on your goals and every project is obviously different because every business is different every business owner your goals are going to be different um and so you also have to keep in mind your message what message do you want to give out through your branding right do you want your logo to feel like we said more minimal and elegant or do you want it to feel very detailed and i don't know very in, in an intricate design which by the way i know that when it comes i work with a lot of women so a lot of my women oftentimes come and say i want glitter i want this i want that and yes it's beautiful but i always come back and let them know you also need a functional logo what is functional? Functional means that it's not only gonna work with whatever color background, original color background you approve it with. You want it to be able to, let's say that I, I work with photographers a lot of times and they need something to watermark their pictures. So what does that mean? That they need a logo that's not only gonna work in their original colors, but it needs to work in black and white and be able to be legible when they place it on their photos. Because if they have a logo and they put it on their pictures and you can't read it, Who's going to come to your business if they can't find you, right? They don't know. They can't read the name of your company or they don't even know what that symbol means. Um, so it needs to be functional. Also, because your logo, it's going to go everywhere. I promise you that once you have it, you're going to want to show it off. So that means that it's going to probably go if you have a construction business, an AC business, it's going to go on your van, right? It's going to go on your windows. It's going to probably go on some T-shirts. What does that mean? That it has to be able to be embroidered or um, screen printed, whatever it is. And if your logo has a lot of intricate design, one uh, sparkles or glitter that is not printable. So that is what I mean by functional. You need to keep this into consideration when you're working with a designer because if you work with a graphic designer that doesn't specialize in branding, they're going to give you exactly what you want, but they're not thinking ahead of if it's going to be functional or not when you're getting ready to move on to all of your marketing promotional items. Um, so your slogan, now let's move to your slogan. Your slogan is a promise about the benefits of the product or service that your company offer, and it must be original. However, not, not every company needs a slogan, right? A lot of times uh, people feel that they need a slogan to farther describe what they do just in case people can't read that from their logo or from their website, but that's not always needed. Um, I feel like when it works the most is when companies have been passed down maybe through generations and you've we've all seen companies that are like since 1980 something since 18 something 1800 something right and that gives us like wow they've been in business they know what they're doing they have been doing this for so long but if you're going to do a slogan i would just say make sure that it's aligned it's really aligned and it's really doing something for you because it can also scare people away so make sure that it's it's going to be functional and it's going to be delivering the right message for you and not just to have a slogan. Um, for a website, it's important to have your own domain, right? A lot of websites now allow us to get free websites without to build free websites on our own, but we still have the option to buy our own domain. You do not want a website that says I don't know, wix.com slash your business name, you want a website that has your company name, right? Because again, it's going to have to be memorable. And if you can make it as short as possible, that helps because we are, we're all lazy and we don't like typing a long username or domain on Google. So make sure that you have your own domain. For instance, mine is stephaniadesigns.com, right? It's my business name, it's pretty memorable. And even if you didn't know my website, you'd probably try searching it up and see if it came up as that. So that's a quick example. Um, the design should also be, be friendly and easy to use. Um, you want your design, again, to be aligned. You don't want your website to be red and purple if your Instagram is like yellow and green. You know, it, you want it to be aligned. And one one quick tip that I didn't put on here, but I like to always give out for in my example, I always like to use 
my branding uh, throughout my platforms and website, I like to use the same profile picture. So for instance, if you're a company, you most more than likely are going to be using your logo. But for me, sometimes I use like a headshot. So I like using the same headshot in LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Why? Because when people search me up, they're going to know, oh, it is her because look, they have the same colors. They have the same picture. That's her. And that's a way, a quick and easy way to brand your entire um, social media and website platforms. Um, if it's your logo, then obviously you can change the background of your logo, but have the same logo. You also want the same um, tone of voice to be used across your entire platforms. So if someone replies through your Facebook page, they should feel that they're talking to the same person as if they DM you on Instagram and maybe it's your social media manager, right? They should feel like they're talking to the same person because they should be following your brand guidelines and your tone of voice because you are one company as a whole and that's how it should always feel right um going back to the design it should be a design of your website it should be easy to use you don't want your people to get lost or or bored or i can't even understand what they do so they'll just end up closing the browser and moving on to the next competitor you want your website to be straight to the point what do you do who do you serve um and what makes you unique? Why why would they even want to bother to give you a call? So I always think that I know a lot of us um, probably hire someone else to create our websites. So we trust that they understand this, but we always get obviously like revisions and be able to give feedback as the customer. So make sure that you always look for that, that it's friendly, easy to use, both mobile and desktop, please, because a lot of times websites look great on computer, but if, they do not, if they're not functional or they don't look the same on your mobile, you're losing money, you're losing clients, because um, I always find it interesting when I check my analytics for my website, uh, most of the traffic will check your links through mobile. It's very rare that people go on an actual computer and search you up. They will, but it's more on mobile. So that mobile experience has to be up to date and make sure that it's very um, functional and they're easy, easy to navigate, easy to contact you. Moving on to promotional. Promotional is another attribute for your quality brand. So these are like we talked about t-shirts, brochures, business cards, envelopes, labels, folders, invoices, etc. Um, these are items that can help you make and build that experience of a more quality brand. So again, if your salon is beautiful and it has you know expensive chandeliers and this amazing experience, but then you hand them your business card or your invoice and they're like, hold on, this is the same business. <laughs> you want them to be able to feel that entire experience matching with everything that you hand them out, right? Even if you, let's say you work in the beauty industry, you hand them out a lip gloss, you hand them out something. If you're branding that item, you're already 10 steps ahead of your competitors. Because again, not everyone is taking the time to do that. And two, although it's costing you money, that money is going to be returned to your bank account and multiplied because you're branding yourself. If someone drops that chapstick or that business card and someone finds it on the floor, it's already branded. You had, I guarantee that you probably had your contact information on there. I hope they're going to be able to search you up. Oh, let me see that chapstick looks cool or that pen looks cool. Let me search them up. What do they do? And that's how you start branding yourself and marketing yourself without you being in the room. So that's why it's important as well, because you always branding is going to talk for you when you're not in the room. So let's say that I give a presentation and I walk out. What did those people learn from me? What could they read from me? Whatever they say when you're not in the room is what's going to speak for your business and for yourself. Um, and that's really where you start to see your branding and marketing efforts paying off. Okay, now let's move to reasons to boosting your branding, right? We talked about why it's important. We talked about the benefits and some examples. So just to clarify, um, it's going to help you with number one, product differentiation. So again, the coffees, the water bottles, right? What was the difference between them? 
brand history or branding. So the way that you tell your story, the ability to convey how your product solves customer problems, how it will motivate them to buy it, and ultimately how is it going to transform their lives if they buy this, right? So how many times do we see athletic brands um, talking about their products, like their activewear? How do they approach it? Are they approaching it just for people that are already athletes? Or are they approaching it to people that want to get started on their fitness journey and all of their content and all of their messaging is talking to that person that wants to get started, but they're just not motivated. They just feel like they're not there yet. Um, or are you talking to maybe maybe you're a brand that targets both? Maybe you target people that are really into fitness, but then you're also into those those people that wear gym clothes to go grocery shopping and drop off their kids, but they never actually work out, right? But they look like they work out all day. <laughs> so maybe you're that brand. The way that you tell the brand's story is really going to help you attract your people and build that relationship with them. Um, moving to number three, customer relations. That connection, more having that mentality of having that customer more than that one time, right? I have clients that we became friends a long time ago after working on one single project. Or then there's clients that literally we work together all the time on different things. They have different businesses and they always know that I'm like their go-to person. You want that mentality, not only on yourself, but if you have a team, then you want your team to always think and act with that mentality that you want to build a relationship and not just a client for a day or for a month. Um, this allows you to obviously start building your network and also, like I mentioned earlier, that if you're not in the room, you trust that these partners, these connections are going to talk highly of you and bring you business and hopefully you do the same for them. Uh, number four is going to build confidence in your business. So for me, I don't know about y'all, but I can't sleep if I know that my website needs to be redone. If my Instagram is not updated, like um, if it, if my headshots or pictures don't look like me anymore, uh, you know, girls, we change our hair all the time or we change our style every now and then. If it doesn't look or feel like me anymore, I know that I have to get new headshots. I know that I have to work on my website and I can't literally, it will literally keep me up <laughs> at night. Like I have to do this. Why? Because the internet doesn't sleep, right? Um it's always there. So maybe while you're asleep, someone remembered at 3 a.m. that they need their logo done. So then they're searching up a Dallas, I don't know, Dallas logo designer, Dallas brand designer, and you're asleep and they land on your page. It's nerve wracking when you know that your page is not branded or it's not providing the right links um, to get to you, to contact you. So it has to give you that confidence that you're able to go to sleep knowing and trusting that all of your social platforms or that your business cards, your promotion, like physical promotional items, that they're all speaking highly of you and that they're setting the expectation and the message that you want to so that they can bring you the clients that you want. So this is what I mean by confidence. You're confident. A lot of the times after I wrap up projects, branding projects with my clients, um, you know, I'll, I'll send a survey and ask them, you know, how did you feel, I don't know, a couple months after working with me or how has it impacted your business and a lot of times that's such a common answer they'll tell me i just feel confident if i'm invited to go speak if i'm invited to be a vendor i feel confident that my booth is going to be branded and that when i talk to them i now know who i'm talking to and my my unique point of selling right i feel confident to hand out my business card because i know it doesn't look like a three-year-old did it or i'm confident to hand out my invoices or go pitch my business to local businesses around me because I know that they're not going to laugh at me because maybe I look well put together, but my business doesn't, right? So that's where that confidence comes from through your branding. And here's just another branding quote. Building your brand strategically and creatively will help your customers believe in your product as much as they believe in you and your team. So this, uh, I decided to put this slide here because I feel like this ties everything we've, we've speak about up to this moment. 
because if you build your brand with a strategy and creativity, thinking about your competitors, but also your customers, um, it's going to help them believe in your product, right? How many times, um, let's say I was, I've heard it a lot in the beauty industry where they think they have an amazing product, but they're just struggling to get people to buy it, get people to even try it, right? They find themselves handing out free samples just to get people to try their product. You are looking for people to believe in something, but a lot of times it's because you're still not believing in yourself and in your business and what you're offering. The minute you start doing that, it's the minute that your business is going to change. That's the minute that you're going to start positioning yourself as the expert and you're going to start attracting the right clientele. So again, branding, think about it as your business partner, right? You're going to work together and strategically build and grow your business because you know that you invested time and money into putting thought into every next move that goes on for your business through branding that is going to allow them to believe in your product or service and same with your team right when you hire a team they can sense that the business owner or the manager whoever it is is not fully confident in what they do, right? And you have to be able to transmit that because then how else would you train them to do the same for you if you're not transmitting that yourself, right? And we always hear about fake it till you make it. You just have to believe in yourself. Um, just as an example, when I built this business as a college student, there was a lot of uh, lack of confidence there because um, a lot of times I knew my skills, but I didn't know how to pitch it or how to say my story, how to tell my story, right? What made me unique. The minute I sat down and really thought about that was the minute that my business changed and I was able to expand beyond branding services because I was able to see what I could bring to the table and how it would transform people's businesses or lives, if it's a personal brand or if it's a small business, I was able to see what I was bringing and how it was going to impact that, right? What solutions was I providing? What um, what were they going to feel after working with me? What was the experience that I wanted them to go through to not only get them the end result, but also educate them along the way in the topic so that when they were good to go they had that confidence to show up for themselves because i was not going to be this their salesperson right their branding was and they they are themselves so i had to be i myself had to be confident to say okay our project is wrapped up but i'm also confident that you are feeling confident right now to go out in the door and announce this is my new branding and this is why we changed it or this is why i created my business and then move on from there with confidence to start growing because if you're not believing in in your entire mission and vision then it's really hard to grow and really you know start making those next steps or leveling up your business These are just some branding portfolio samples for some clients that we've created um, through the company. So I know you're looking at all this and what is this? So let's just talk very briefly. That first picture you see was one of the very first businesses that I got to brand as, a, as an intern, I believe, in college. So this organization is a nonprofit organization. They had no branding from the beginning and we sat down did a lot of research through their consultations and everything. And what you see here is their letterhead, their business cards and their brochures, right? If you found this on the floor or if you just saw it laying down on the table with a bunch of other stuff, you would identify or recognize that these three marketing items are related because of their colors, their logo, of course, and just looking at them from far away you would know oh this all these three things are related to the same person to the same business and it would probably make help to um encourage you to pick them up and read about it um maybe if the colors attract your attention right depending if you're into purple or not but that's just an overview like from far away of what branding your physical products look like um, because like I said, if they found this on the floor, they would know that it's the same business and they would probably be encouraged to give them a call depending if they're, 
if they felt connected with anything that they read on this brochure or not. The picture in the bottom is for a jewelry client, right? She wanted to bring that branded experience to her clients that when they bought products from her at pop-up shops or through her actual business location, that when they walked away, they weren't just walking away with a plain bag. They had their name on it so that, again, if they left it somewhere, they maybe let's say I went to have coffee with a friend after the pop-up and I brought that bag. I bet you they were going to compliment it and say, wow, I've never heard of that brand. And they're probably going to go look them up. Um, and then they're going to hear from the person that bought, right? There's that word of mouth. What does it feel? What are their products like? Do they last long? Are they actually real gold? Whatever, right? What not? But that bag itself brings that opportunity to start that conversation about your business. So that is a great way. If you have physical products, do not miss out on this opportunity to brand any and every item that you can. Um, the one in the middle is a complete branding project. So it's their entire logo, social media, business cards. Um, and this is just to show that they can brand pretty much their entire experience from digital to physical experience. And on the left, is just a, fan, a fun um, waxing business as well. This one's obviously more girly targeted to women. So that's why the colors are so pink and red and all of that stuff. Um, and the one in the bottom is a hair salon studio. And it also shows you their business cards, um, some of their social media templates and their brand patterns. So a lot of people don't know what brand patterns can be used for or what they are. Brand patterns, uh, think of Nike. One of their brand patterns or iconic icon is the little check mark, right? You see that on their socks, you see that on their clothes. Um, I'm not sure if they have like waxing paper, uh, what is it, tissue paper for gifts. Um, but a lot of times people use it on that in their, their purses. Like Guess, I know Guess uses the little G icon and pattern on their purses. They love that. They'll use it on their sandals. They'll use it on everything. That's an example of how you can use brand patterns and brand even when it's kind of blended, you're still branding your products. Okay, and so your business is unique and your brand design and marketing strategy should be too. We've talked about positioning yourself as the expert in your industry and being able to confidently speak about what makes you and your brand or your team unique, right? What makes your service? You Maybe you provide the same service as your competitors, but what makes the whole experience unique? And don't think about only pricing, think about everything, the experience, how do you approach it? How do you follow up with your clients after the project is completed, right? All of these things are part of that customer brand experience. And obviously your design and marketing strategy should be created and developed with that in mind, with your business, with your competitors and your clients in mind, not only what you like, not only your color, your favorite colors, your favorite fonts, that if that is what, what your current marketing and branding design and strategy are showing, then you're doing it wrong. It needs to talk to your clients and your potential leads, right? It needs to be able to build that emotional connection so that eventually you can form, form that relationship with them. And lastly, this is how you can contact me if you have any questions, if you are interested in upgrading your branding um, or maybe learning a little bit more about anything that I spoke about today. This is my contact information. Um, we do anything from logo and brand design. I am bilingual, so if you prefer Spanish, my team and I can also assist you in that. And that's pretty much all I have for today, Jenny. <laughs> Awesome. Listen, you were worried you were going to go too fast and only go for like 25, 30 minutes and we're almost at the end. So I want to get you awesome. a couple of questions before we go. What do you think of products like, like Canva where somebody, somebody's like, okay, I'm just starting off. Like I don't have a business. I don't have a budget. I don't have anything. Um, can somebody start off with something like that where it does, if people aren't familiar, it's like they have templates and stuff like that. What, what do you think? Yes, absolutely. I understand that when we first start our business, we don't have the budget to go and hire, outsource everything, right? Social media, website, all of that stuff. Um, so I definitely think 
Canva is a, it's a great resource for small businesses when you're just starting out. You know, a lot of people that come to me are always embarrassed to say, well, I do have a logo, but I made it on Canva. Girl, you don't need to be worried. Everyone starts somewhere. Um, I'm pretty sure if I wasn't a brand designer, I would have started the same way. So there's no need to be ashamed there. If the resources are there, you're smart for using them. So that is definitely something that you can use. However, when you do start growing your business and you're wanting to brand, like we talked about your social media, your business cards, all your collateral, um, the risky part is when you start using templates that obviously everyone has access to. Um, so the way that it would work better is once you have your set of colors and typography, you input that into Canva, and then you know that any template that you pick, you pick, sorry, you'll be able to brand, and then it'll be, it'll still be um, unique to you because it's gonna have your colors and your fonts and your logo. Um, also, another quick thing that I would say about the logos to be watch out to watch out for would be that those uh, Canva logos cannot be trademarked or copyrighted. So if you are 100% serious from the beginning, then I would probably recommend to save up at least to start off with your logo design so that you'll be able to confidently keep growing your business because I, I know that we start putting our logo in everything and it can be expensive to change it later on and having to redo everything else. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind that it cannot be copyrighted um with, whereas when you work with a brand designer we give you full rights and then you can go and trademark and it's pretty much your own okay that makes sense thank you that thank you for being like not judging i think people feel bad about it but i think that's a great explanation on both ends okay what do you say and i have so many questions for you but i'm going to just rapid fire what do you say to somebody who is like okay i'm I'm a Gemini. I'm all over the place. One day I like bold colors. One day I want monochromatic. One day I want really simple. One day I want really complicated. How do you get somebody to pick? Because a brand, like you you have to stick with it for a while, right? Yeah, definitely. I've had clients that are like that and they do have a hard time narrowing it down. So whenever um, I work with my clients, I always provide them with an initial concept that explores at least two to three options for based on their consultation call. And so if they're like that at the beginning of the call where they mentioned, you know, I like these three styles, I'm not really sure which one I'm leaning to, I would again look back into ask them, okay, but who do you want to target? Because what do they like? What are they going to be attracted to, right? Because it's not just about you, it's about them. Um, and then if they say something that I can, I feel confident to provide three examples and compare them to, then they have that opportunity to compare them and see which one feels more aligned to their business and themselves as well. Okay. Because, because it's true. Like you don't want to be all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of times, um, I always recommend doing like for logo, when it comes to logo, uh, I always recommend building like a little mood board or something that they like and then from there I take it based on their you know what they like but also our call and our notes and then I make my own like mood board vision board and send it to them and explain why I have any specific images or elements in there and that usually helps them to relax and and uh, clarify their ideas okay I think I know where we're going now and it clarifies the path to wrapping up the project or or at least getting it started Right. Yeah. Because it's, it's for somebody that's not inclined, like I'm not inclined that way. I'm like, Ooh, I love what she put out there. But you know, like I, I sometimes I'll think on my Instagram, I'll think, Oh, I should try to stick with the same color scheme, but I never do because I'm like, Nope, want to yeah. post, post this, want to post this. And it's really tough to stick to it. Do you have any advice for people in terms of like sticking to their selected fonts, colors, brands, logos? So I think if you're, if you're branding your business from a more like corporate approach, then it's important to stick to your, at least your feed to stick to your colors. Um, but I do have brands that I work with where we do seasonal colors. So what does that mean? That our, our content is not going to stay consistent as far as colors, but we're probably going to still use our, our main fonts and our logo. So their logo changes color every season but it's the same logo. So people find that fun and interesting, which is aligned to their brand. Like that's what we want to communicate. So in that case, it's still working for them. It's not damaging their brand because it's still branded. Um, but at the same time, they're having fun and they're not losing clients. Rather, they're attracting a new audience every season that we change it. If that's, I, I don't know if that answers the question. 
No, that totally does. I think that's a good, that's a great example. I really, really loved your talk. It was, I, I learned a lot. I know everybody else did as well. Um, somebody was asking for your number again. And so if somebody, if you all were looking to get a hold of her, um, Sarah National Events should just put it in the chat, her email address. Yes, so You'll be able to see that email. Is there a certain website you want people to go to? Yeah, they can go to www.stefaniadesigns.com. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And I saw that you're on Instagram too. So thank yes. you so much. This was a wonderful presentation and I look forward to part two. Yes. Week. Next yes, week. thank you all so much. And sorry, I took a little longer. <laughs> no, no need to apologize. It was all good. I I loved it and took notes and I'll have even more questions for you next week. That was yes. great. Next week, we're going to cover more on social media and content creation. So for those of you that were like, she barely touched it, tune in next Thursday. <laughs> Yes. So here's the deal, everybody. The replay of this one is going to be mm. on YouTube, Sarah National's YouTube channel by Wednesday. So if you're kind of like, okay, I glazed over that in the beginning, but now I realized I could actually use this talk to help start my strategy, start thinking about my branding. The replay will be up. The link is in the comments. So you can go there. You can watch that replay on Wednesday and then meet us right back here. Same time, same place for part two, talking about social media next Thursday. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Bye. Thank you.